What are best practices for tables and accessibility? When we see a table, we immediately start making visual associations between the data and the headers, right? For example, let's say that this table is a representation of our pets. We have two dogs and two cats, and the table is showing us their names and ages. While a sighted person may be able to understand the relationships in this table, making the connection between the values and the headers is much harder for people who use screen readers to navigate the table. As a web developer, you are in charge of creating these associations and structuring your HTML markup in a way that is also easy for screen reader users to interpret. So let's see how you can create accessible tables that everyone can understand. The first best practice that we will cover is using table captions. With the caption element, you can write the caption or title of a table so users, especially those who use assistive technologies, can quickly understand the table's purpose and content. You should place the caption element immediately after the opening tag of the table element. This way, screen readers and other assistive technologies can provide more context by announcing the caption before reading the content. Now let's talk about row and column headers. Headers are special cells, typically found at the start of a row or column, that describe the type of data stored in that row or column. You can define a row or column header with the table header element. For example, here we have a table with two pets. Every row has a row header, the name of the pet, and every column has a column header, which describes what the data in the column represents, age and type. This is the same table in HTML. Notice that it has a caption element immediately after the opening table element. Then inside the table head element, it has the column headers, name, age, and type. In the second and third rows, inside the table body element, we find the data of each one of our pets, the names of the pets are the row headers because they are inside table header elements, th. Associating the data cells with their corresponding headers is also very important for screen readers. The scope attribute determines if a header is a row header or a column header. Screen readers may guess this correctly from the table structure, but it's usually recommended to explicitly indicate the scope to ensure clarity. The scope attribute has four possible values. The two that you will use most often are col, col for column, and row for row. Here you can see that we added the scope attribute to the column and row headers. The three column headers, name, age, and type, have a scope of col, column. The two row headers, Nora and Gino, have a scope of row. If a column or row header spans across multiple cells, the scope will also be applied to each one of the cells individually. Here is an example of that. In this table, the cell with Nora's age, 5, will have one column header, age, and two row headers, dogs and Nora. Gino's age, 2, will also have one column header, age, and two row headers, dogs and Gino. However, some screen readers may not be able to interpret tables with these complex structures, so you should try to flatten the table as much as possible to avoid row and column headers that span across multiple cells. Your goal should always be to make sure that users can access this information, even if their screen readers can handle complex table structures. Now, for cell width, it's recommended to avoid using fixed values. You should use relative values instead, like percentages. Also, try to avoid defining cell height. This will allow users to adjust text size to fit their needs. And finally, you should let the browser determine the table width whenever possible to reduce the need for horizontal scrolling. HTML tables are essential for presenting structured data in an accessible and understandable format. By following these accessibility guidelines, you can create tables that are easy to understand for everyone.